I want to end on this one. I want to just tell you that taking care of our staff is one of the best and most important things we can do because working with troubled youth is stressful and it could really burn a person out. And I know that you're all in this profession for the big paycheck. I know that. That's the part we're supposed to laugh. Um, <laughs> but the truth is, we love what we do. And I just want to share a story because sometimes I hear people say to me, Frank, I'm going to help a kid in a residential, but I'm going to put them right back into an environment in their neighborhood that's just going to re totally not support all the things we taught. Or I know they're going back to a family that's going to continue to treat them bad. I'm not really making a difference. I don't really feel like I'm doing much. And I want to tell you about, I saw a, a person speaking, uh, and I really apologize for forgetting his name, but he was an advocate for children and, and an advocate for recognizing the dangers of child abuse. He's the one that made me realize, in our country, we had the ASPCA before we had Child Protective Services. We were protecting animals from abuse before we were protecting, protecting children. But he was a, an adopted child. Him and his brother were adopted by two of the most sadistic and sick people I've ever heard of. This man talked in this lecture about sadistic torture. I mean, having his head pushed into a toilet and, and until he was unconscious. He was beaten so badly that he was blind in one eye and deaf in one ear. He made the mistake one year of telling a teacher that um, his parents were abusing him. And the Child Protective Services came out, and that was the worst beating he ever got after that. And he learned after that, keep your mouth shut. And this guy had written seven books, and he was on this lecture circuit. So at the break, I went up to him, and I said to him, I got a question for you. You had this horrific life. You were tortured and beaten. How do you, I want to know what, how do you recover from that to the point where you're a get lecturer, you have seven books? I mean, he's accomplishing way more than I was, and I didn't have that horrific life. And he said, after the break, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you all. And I was like, I can't wait. And this is the story that he told. He says, guys, don't ever minimize the impact you have on the kids that you're working with, because I want to tell you a story about my fifth grade teacher. He said, every day I go into school and I have bruises all over my body, but I learned to keep my head down and you know, not to be noticed. One day, the bookmobile came to the school, and everybody went out to the bookmobile, but this guy, the, this, this lecturer, when he was in fifth grade, he stayed in his seat, and he said, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the bookmobile. Because he really just wanted to keep a low profile. He was terrified and traumatized. And his teacher went over to him, his name was Bill, and put her on, put it, she put her arm around Bill and said, come here. We're going to go to the bookmobile together, okay? And we're going to pick out a book, and I'm going to buy it for you. So he said, okay. So he went with her to the bookmobile, and he picked out this book, The Swiss Family Robinson. He went home, and he read this book about this family that shipwrecked on an island and about this treehouse that they made. And he said, for the years that followed, he endured horrific beatings at home. But the thing that got him through it was, in his mind, he would go back to this treehouse and this island, and he would, he would endure it, and he would, it would get him through. And he said, that teacher saved my life. That teacher saved my life. She didn't realize it. And he says, I want to go back and tell her that that moment of putting your arm around me and bringing me down to the bookmobile and letting me lose my pain and my suffering in this treehouse changed my whole life. So please don't minimize what you do. It's, it could be a conversation. It could be the patience you show sometimes when a child is really pushing your buttons and you blow their mind by not aggressing, by not getting, just being there for them. And, and you guys do so much more than that. So I want to close on that and thank you for all of your attention and time.